Hello, my name is Manuel Hernandez, and I am lecturer in digital media at the University of Salford, Manchester, UK, where I lead uh, the BA in digital media and extended realities. Before starting with the presentation of this chapter that I co-author with uh, my colleague, Dr. Maria Jose Baños Moreno, I would like to express my gratitude to the editors of this book and to the organizers of this conference, Naren Chide, Lillian G, Gary Ronsley, but very especially to Professor Naren Chide, who has been guiding us through the process of submission of this chapter and gave us invaluable feedback. Unfortunately, as you can imagine while watching this video, we have some work commitments today. Uh, in my case, I have some classes that is a class with this conference. And my colleague, uh, Dr. Bañez Moreno, is uh, working at a private company, Odilo, where she supervises the archives and databases. It is not always easy for both of us at the same time to participate as actively in research as we would like. I hope you understand this, and uh, I hope also that this video gives a good impression of uh, all the work we have done for this volume. In this sense, we will be happy to be contacted by you with questions about this chapter and engage in any fruitful discussion uh, from this point. Now, I hand this over to my colleague, who will be introducing the paper and its theoretical framework. I will take my turn later, and we will be commenting the results and conclusions of this study. Hello, my name is Maria Jose Baños Moreno from the University of Murcia and Odilo. And together with my colleague Manuel Hernandez Perez from the University of Salford, I have written the chapter Production and Consumption of Academic Knowledge, the Rising and Expansion of the Soft Power Concept, 1989-2020. In recent decades, soft power has been used as a term for designating power relations. Scholarship production also incorporates these discourses to its cycle of knowledge production. In that sense, we proposed a communicational approach based on textual purpose analysis focused exclusively on academics. So the main goal of this study is to build a comprehensive framework for the study of production, consumption, and content of scientific publications. This framework, which we refer to as academic ecosystem, can be characterized through the study of three dimensions, as can be seen on the slide. Production, content of scientific production, and consumption. The first one, production, characterizes sub-power literature from the national production and co-authorship of papers and other work works and as well as historical development. Content of scientific production is an analysis of soft power topics and themes to differentiate historical and local trends. And the last one, consumption, is about a review of different station and reference measures. Here, the relationship between consumption and production of soft power literature is considered uh, as an instrument of indirect measurement of national interest on the topic. Regarding to the methodology, for this research, it included the following major steps. Data collection and construction of the corpus and analysis of bibliometric data. In the first block, a search was carried out on a scopus, one of the main scholar databases, in order to construct a corpus composed of research articles specialized in soft power and other related terms, and belonging to the period 1989 and 2020. To include the maximum of related terms, some of the most representative publications of the area were selected. These are shown on the next slide. In the second block, the textual corpus was analyzed to extract characteristics related to the bibliometric production content and consumption. This process included the following steps. Construction of a taxonomy, thematic evolution analysis uh, using SIMAT, and the third one, network analysis and visualizations employing Boss Weaver. Four of the most representative publications about soft power are the next. 
the changing nature of world power, keeping up with Asia, America and the new balance of power, China's soft power, discussions, resources and prospects, and the last one, hard, hard power, soft power, smart power. By reading these works, many related terms that are part of the semantic field of soft power were found, including cool American and comprehensive national power. Also, some synonyms were identified, such as cooperative power, cooptive power, or responsible power. Our knowledge of the concepts linked to the soft power were increased substantially. This scheme shows the procedure employed. The search undertaken on Scopus yielded 105,080 documents. But after the data collection and selection, 16 were discarded, so our final sample was composed by 105,064 documents. After that, we identified 1,522 keywords. They were analyzed and categorized into three groups of equivalent terms, related terms and cases, or instances. As a result, we obtained a taxonomy with 889 groups of terms. This tool was employed in SIMAT for the analysis of SEMS. Finally, Viewer was employed to create a map based on bibliography data from the collection of documents. It also provided uh, other graphics that are exposed by Manuel on the next slides. Many thanks for this, Maria Jose. Now I will proceed to the discussion of the main results of our study. As you can imagine, this chapter is quite long, so we will need to try to focus only on the most relevant aspects, you know, and those that can be, uh, you know, helping us to rise from discussion due to their novelty or their in the study of the academic production. In this case, it starts with the historical development of the concept of power. As commented by my colleague, we needed to define and identify the corpus of this literature. A total of 1,564 articles were identified over three periods. These periods were created uh, corresponding with significant change in its uh, volume of production. The first one, the first one of these uh, milestones, or turning points, was 1990s, with the release of the first articles where this concept is coined and referred. In 2005, the production duplicates, and later in 2015, it stabilized with a much larger production. An interesting way of framing the academic production focuses on examining the differences among countries. In this figure, you can see how we have differences between radio production, considering national producers, the mention of different countries in abstracts, okay, and the level of self-reference, which is something we have calculated employing uh, the previous data. So this is expressed as number of articles with self-references. The results are ordered by country production and displays the 19 most relevant national producers. We have countries with low production, very low production, less than three articles, that, however, uh, interestingly, score very high in self-references. Like, for example, Qatar, Kenya, Azerbaijan, Cyprus, Bosnia, Ethiopia, Slovenia, Cameroon, and Costa Rica. Then we have countries with low moderate levels of production, that is, less than 10 articles, and moderate levels of self-references like, for example, Indonesia and Thailand. Among the large producers, those with more than 25 articles, we have China, Japan, Turkey, and Russia, that stand out for their high level of self-reference. However, we have Canada, US, Germany, Sweden, France, and UK that are still larger producers, 
but they have a very low percentage of self referral. Obviously, we need to highlight the case of China, who is important as a national producer, but is even more important in terms of uh, abstract mention. The reasons for these differences in terms of self referencing is something that needs still to be clarified. This graphic shows the evolution of international collaborations. In the first period, everything was individual or national collaborations. Then later in the second and third, there is a change, a change in terms of uh, increasing the international collaborations and uh, also the multiple affiliation, something very common nowadays in academia. As commented, Antimetric implies the combined use of diplometrics, content analysis, and network science. In this figure, we can see uh, how we have visualized the co-authorship of countries collaborating using the software BOS Viewer. The results were filtered to show only countries with more than five citations and show up 15 documents divided in 28 items eight clusters. In terms of clusters, it seems very clear United Kingdom as one of the centers of collaborations and also United States. Another way of seeing this uh, collaboration among countries is the use of bibliographic coupling, that is to use the shared references. When we use these methods, we can see that the clusters are not exactly the same because, for example, United Kingdom and United States tends to share the same references. So while they don't collaborate digitally, they use the same corpus. A different reason to be done in the case of other clusters like the one surrounding East Asia. What is the reason they tend to cross-reference the same work? Maybe because they share a particular geographical context and therefore there is the justification for using sources that talk about the same uh, area. Defining the most important terms can be done through the creation of a strategic diagram analysis, which is one of the features of this SMAT software we have employed. In order to maximize its usefulness, it was necessary to create a new design. Now, the strategic diagram analysis can show us some important relevant topics in the soft power literature. In this graphic, we have ordered them regarding these values in density. So health uh, related terms, soft power, US, these are the most dense terms. In fact, this is what we call motor themes because they are high in density, that is uh, the number of mentions, but also in centrality, the number of connection among all the items. This allow us as well to see the evolution of these motor themes in relation to the different periods, and also the same for all the uh, less important themes, like those that are emerging or declining, or those that can be considered as basic and transversal themes. Here on the left, what you can see is the general sample without differentiating periods. The co-occurrence of terms can help us to characterize the concept of sub-power in relation to other subtopics. We have, for example, in this graphic, public diplomacy, international relationships, also diplomacy types, subtypes, political power, hard power, Confucius Institute, and China. Perhaps more homogeneous is the case of the term US that relates to North America, administration, Cold War, military power, etc. It also deserves a special discussion the characterization of the concept health and all these related terms in relation to topics such as research, conflict, international cooperation, etc. Another way to explore these relationships is through the visualization of a network of co-occurrence. In this case, for example, we can see very clearly the cluster here in blue color in relation to soft power, diplomacy, cultural related terms, national branding, etc. Versus, for example, other aspects that might have to do more with hard power, 
like uh, political power, geopolitical, international relations. As commented, the chapter is longer than this, and we have other interesting data in relation to the soft power concept and soft power literature. Here, for example, we have a co-citation network of sources. The relatedness is calculated based on the number of times they are cited together. The radio of the nodes is a reflection of the number of citations. These results, uh, as usual, they were filtered to show sources over 100 citations. So we have 36 items divided in four clusters. Perhaps in this case, it's interesting to see the difference uh, between the different genres. Uh, we have uh, academic publications, for example, the volumes of power that means to success, which is considered here like a journal. This is one of the peculiarities of databases like uh, Scopus. But we have also in this yellow cluster, other uh, peripheral sources like uh, like the Journal of Foreign Affairs, or also the Guardian and the New York Times, which are not academic publications. With this, we should get to the conclusions of uh, our study. First of all, we think that the soft power is a good example of how scientometrics can be useful to read on international politics. In our case, we have employed this uh, framework of production and consumption of knowledge as a way of explaining how these two spheres, the sphere of academic uh, knowledge and international politics, might be interacting together, mainly through the reflection in the academic environment of many of the movements in international politics. One example could be to consider international production on soft power as a sign of the interest of different institutions, different countries, on understanding and pursuing the soft power itself. Talking more about soft power, understanding better soft power, might be also a way to uh, achieve more soft power or just as a way of claiming the position of the country in terms of a holder of this soft power. Also, the thematic analysis can help to characterize the soft power. Like, for example, co-occurrence of soft power can illustrate the relevance of other themes that are sometimes hidden. Like, for example, uh, health, the role of NGOs, the role of particular countries. Those can be considered in those can be considered in terms of centrality and density. These discourses can be also better characterized through the visualization techniques. This research is mainly exploratory and should be considered a first step for future investigations on soft power literature. Future iterations of the project could pay more attention to other academic forms of research, like, for example, conferences or book chapters, but also include other academic databases, like, for example, a wealth of knowledge, or a Google Scholar, and those can be a good way of use these taxonomies that have been already defined in the context of a more ambitious exploration of the rise and development of the soft power scholar literature. Our chapter, as expected, employs many different resources. Perhaps it is especially relevant to focus our attention to the methods that have been mentioned in the context of the work. It can be a good idea to be familiar with the work of the scholars who designed the software that we have employed. For example, the publications by Dr. Cobos' team in Spain, the creators of SIMAT, and Dr. Van Eek and Dr. Waldman, who designed the BOS Viewer for network visualization. Finally, I would like to share our contact details and affiliation should anybody wish to contact us with questions or suggestions for future studies. If you want, you can use the QR code provided to access our profile, or if you prefer, you can send us an email. It has been a real pleasure to participate in this volume and this presentation. We hope you have enjoyed our research and to hear back from you soon.
Many thanks again for the organizers of this conference and the editors of this volume that we are so proud to be part of. Thank you very much and bye-bye.